Hey, buddy. No matter where in the world you are joining us from, we welcome you to the Wrestling of Padre Slamcast right here on the stream.tv. Very special guest, Bianca Belair, coming up later on in the show. Dale Rutledge sat down with her during the Mae Young Classic. But first things first, we have an incredible squad right here in studio. Let's get to it. We're at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. I'm Johnny LaQuasto with you at Jay Quasto. That man right there is in the brand new feature film, Dave Made a Maze in theaters on VOD. Find him everywhere at Scott Narver. He's Scotty Narver. Are you sure you're ready? You were bleeding the hard way before we started. I am. My thumb is bleeding, and I'm going through a move right now. And this wasn't even part of the move. This was opening a can of black beans. <laughs> Opened a can of black beans and made myself bleed. All right. So, well, it's going to be fun when you bleed in your computer, and then it, next week it's I might get be congealed. Uh, I might get some color during the show. We'll see what happens. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Uh, and she's back again. Do to popular demand because people love her. She's a trainee at Santino Brothers, the host of the Women Wrestling Friends podcast. Find her everywhere at Sarah the Rebel. She's Sarah the Rebel. It me. I actually cut my fingers open every time I eat SpaghettiOs to the point where I'm not allowed to eat SpaghettiOs anymore. Is that because you're opening the can with your fingers or you're actually cutting yeah, yourself? Yeah, I just with I punch it until yeah. it looks good. That's the best way to open SpaghettiOs. Yeah. So where do you cut? Like, I, I, that's a bad one. I yeah, got myself pretty I bet good. that hurts. It'll just be everywhere, you know, kind of just. Well, you know who else is everywhere? Our special guest in studio. Uh, you've seen him on Conan. He's a former writer for WWE. You've seen him on At Midnight. Follow him at McCarthy Redhead, which is the most appropriate Twitter handle I've ever heard in my life. He's Matt McCarthy, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hello there. What's up, dude? Thanks for having me. I don't see you enough, and I'm glad we got you in here. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> no response. I, I feel like I see you more than enough. Okay, that's that's. Uh, <laughs> ah, ah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, Dale Rutledge is on assignment this week. He's back in D.C. But um, I don't think he's finishing his assignments. By the way, he might not. He's be. Gi- he's been given a lot of assignments. Yeah, he has yet to turn one in. This is the this is the inbox right here. Mm-hmm. It's blank. Can you only imagine his neighbor must be going crazy right now after being on our show last week. He was a hit. He was a big hit on the show, Scott. Yeah, he made his own Twitter. Yeah. Disgusting. He made his own Twitter handle. I mean, you didn't even talk to him the no. entire segment. Yeah, his 12 minutes of 15 minutes of fame are almost up. Yeah, as we can see here on the screen, Dale's neighbor is, uh, he, he looks a little bit kind of like you in a way. What does that mean? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, he, he, you guys have similar faces is what I'm saying. Poor bastard. Well, that's, either way, uh, we're glad you enjoyed Dale's neighbor uh, because he's, he's going to come back, I think. Really? He's already emailed me like 17 times. That's why you don't give out your email to people on the show. Yeah, well, that's, I, I had never created one for us, so I, that's, my, that's my bad. But Dale's Neighbor is going to come back. Right. Uh, also, big announcement, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, our next tapings this Sunday, September 10th. Alberto El Patron will be in the house, and uh, we're going to be filming stuff for our move to the CW, which begins on October 7th on 110 CW stations across the country. So That's exciting. I can't wait. It's going uh, to be a great crowd. And then the 23rd, we're filming the Saturday before No Mercy. So I think that'll be a great weekend of wrestling for people who want to check it out. So. Move over, Dawson. That's right. You're canceled, Dawson. What year did that actually get canceled? Like 15 years ago, probably. Yeah. Well, they're probably still showing reruns. Gilmore Girls, Dawson's Creek. Gilmore Girls is back, baby. On Netflix? It's everywhere. Okay, it's your favorite show. I'm still waiting for the DVDs to come. Because <laughs> you're still a DVD guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, Sunday, September 10th, if you're in Southern California, come on out, because Alberto El Patron will be there, as well as the entire crew from Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. So, uh, you know, we're going to change it up a little bit. We decided to go with the Slamcast News up front. So with that said, Slamcast News. All right, so last week, everybody, uh, there was a big incident at uh, Triple Mania regarding, you know, with Rosemary and Sexy Star. A lot of internet backlash. Sexy Star decided to respond uh, this week, and essentially she said that she didn't know any of this went down. So she went backstage. No one was really talking about it. No one was tending to Rosemary. She was not complaining, and she said she didn't notice anything until the next day when the internet uh, was all over. Oh. Great. Solved. Yeah, don't think so. <laughs> what? Uh, well, Impact is apparently going to talk all about it this week, Scotty. They are, yes. They've released a video on their YouTube page uh, teasing the backstage fallout that occurred during the event. What do you think about Like, Sexy Star's not part of the Impact roster. Right. So they're going to talk about this on the show. 
Yeah, I think they have to, right? First of all, just from a uh, getting people to watch your show point of view, right? That's kind of like cold-hearted to say, but you know, you want to get ahead of something that happens. Uh, but also because who's going to work with them if you have to worry that they're going to hire unsafe people? You know, that that is a concern. I definitely think they need to address it. I mean, there, there was so much backlash against her to where I, I don't think she's ever going to, uh, anytime recently, get hired, I don't think, by anybody. Well, unless they bring back backlash and then, then fight that'd be a perfect. backlash. That'd be perfect for her. Yeah. Maddie, what do you think about this? Because, like, when you were a writer 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. Twitter wasn't as big as it is now. I mean, everyone's, don't hire her. And I, she says, she's like, I didn't know anything happened. Right. Which is hard to believe. Right. Uh, solution, change the mask. No one will know. <laughs> there it is. Yep. Fail star. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. So She didn't notice anything was wrong when Rosemary's arm was hanging off of her body. Mm-mm. <laughs> Couldn't see. I, she's undead. <laughs> Rosemary's a zombie. Yeah. She's possessed by a demon. Same thing. Exactly. And the arm can't, I mean, the arm can hang. I guess. Yes. Rosemary's arm can hang, yo. Yeah. So that happened. Uh, Moving on, Corey Graves is replacing JBL on SmackDown Live. So basically, Corey Graves is going to be reunited with Byron Saxon, which everyone's very happy about that. So he's going to be on Raw and SmackDown Live, just doubling his workload. And our friend Nigel McGuinness, he is going to be on 205 Live and Main Event. So that's the, I don't know if it's a temporary fix or a permanent deal, but JBL stepped down this past week to be an ambassador for things. Yeah. (laughs) Moggle, I gotta go and bash stuff. Yeah. In Bermuda. Moggle, I gotta be an ambassador to my bank account, Moggle. I really want to get old and then help people in a beautiful tropical island. That's definitely one of my goals. Yeah. You could probably do that now if you really wanted to. No, no. Charities for old people. Got it. Fair enough. <laughs> my bad. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see Nigel on television more, and I think Corey being on SmackDown it only makes the show better. Yeah, him and Byron really had great chemistry, and they had a like a fun Heenan uh, monsoon thing going, and it was it was in the early stages. It needs to keep keep growing. So yeah, because on Raw it's it's hard. The chemistry's not there. Because like with how so? Well, <laughs> would I mean you can't really make fun of Booker on you can't. commentary, and it's hurting I Corey. I yeah. would. I mean, Corey's a heel. Allow me to. Corey's a heel, but it's like he he still can't really, you know. He tries, but Booker has to listen and acknowledge it. Sure. But he's busy making up words. Booker, basically, I just always imagine him not at the commentary table, but sitting in a lawn chair at a barbecue, maybe holding a grape soda Mm -hmm. as he points to the children and makes his comments. And I think Corey is not at this same barbecue, and that is why they don't really have the chemistry. Right. Yeah. Corey's probably at a cookout, not a barbecue. That's that's a fair, that's a pretty good explanation of it. But either way, uh, congrats to Nigel. Um... He's going to be on television more, so mm-hmm. got a lot more work ahead of him. Uh, WWE, speaking of being, wow, speaking of being overworked, Raw is going to be live on Christmas and on New Year's Day this year. Did anyone, <laughs> right? Was there anyone who was pining for this, knowing that people want to be with their families on Christmas? Isn't, and isn't that don't. literally the whole point of A Christmas Carol? That he, and not even Ebenezer Scrooge will make the guy work on Christmas. Yeah, uh, that's a good. That's one of the points of it. Sure, that is one of the lines in Scrooge. No one's Bill, getting. No one's Bill getting. A, yeah, none of them are getting a goose on Christmas Day. It's like who would schedule a live TV broadcast on Christmas? Only you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Only you, Vince. <laughs> hmm. Nobody wants to be with their family. My whole family's already on the road at TV anyway. Well, yeah. that's true. Like, people go out to the movies on that day. You know, after you open presents and you do stuff, you go, all right, let's get the hell out of here. We got mm-hmm. to gotta bolt or do something. And, you know, if if you are a member of your family and you go, I like wrestling, I'm going to watch wrestling right now. And everybody else goes, I'm not watching that. I'm getting away from them. I did put my nephew in a Boston Crab last Christmas Eve. Okay. It's kind of the same thing, right? Well, do you think this was like a, a sponsor's deal? Because if they do not do a live New Year's or Christmas show, that's two weeks in a row of lower ratings with reruns. Is that the reason behind it? Or he was just like... Yeah. Money's the reason for everything. Yeah. Huh. Money's the reason the show's three hours. Oh, God, yeah. The wrestlers don't want it. 
Question. Fans don't want it. When you wrote, were you Raw or SmackDown? Uh, I was both. Okay, so it was when I was there, it was a much smaller team, and it was also not three hours. No, we would do like the specials. So like I was there for you know Retro Raw or uh, Raw One Thousand. And then I think it was after Raw 1000 is when it just went to three hours. So, like, there would be days where we'd be like, okay, we have to come up with themes for the, the three-hour shows coming up. Wow. Yeah. And, and, then, and then it went from 11 segments to 16. And how much fun was that? It's, it's really a lot of fun. <laughs> I can tell you really want to elaborate on that. Well, I'm, what do you want to know? Uh, just it's, how it's much a, of a pressure cooker is it? Well, at first it was like, oh, great, there's more segments for everybody on the roster. Mm -hmm. And then you run into, well, does this segment have enough star power? And then it becomes the debate of, well, if we don't put these guys on TV, how are they going to become stars? Right. You know, it's fascinating. It really is fascinating. It, it, it's suppo booking pro wrestling is supposed to be simple. When it's at its best, it's simple. But there's so much to consider when doing it. It really is one of those things where you walk in, and I'm sure anybody who watches the product uh, or is involved in the business thinks, oh, I could just roll in there. And like you could have every perfectly thought out logical thing, but like the really, the details that you don't consider uh, were fascinating for me to learn, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. What was one unexpected detail that you did not consider going in? Um, I mean, the one thing that always jumped out at me that I never really noticed until I was working there was no matter how much you're putting down your opponent in your promo, you can't put him down so much that I'm like, well, if he's just a giant piece of crap, why am I going to watch you fight him? And then once I, like, once I was informed of that, I was like, when I started watching other promos, I was like, oh, yeah, like, he's like, I hate this guy. It's going to be a tough fight. I hate him. He's really, really good. You're a jerk. You're a weasel. You're a slime. I'm, I'm going to have my hands full because you're so tough. You know, that type of thing. It's the same thing that coaches say at, at press conferences. You know, even, even if they're playing the Jets. Sure. The worst team in NFL. Well, you know, they, uh, they're going to try real hard. I'll tell you that much. Right. I'm going to give a good effort. Right. So we've got to be ready. Yeah. This guy, he's been on a losing streak, so he's got nothing left to lose. Mm hmm You can spin it anyway. So, like, stuff like that or, like, you know, the idea of if so-and-so beats so-and-so, does it bring him down? Does it, like, somebody's going to get brought down if they lose this match. Somebody will be brought up if they win this match. Somebody could lose but still look better than the guy who won the match afterwards. All these different things. And did you, were you primarily centered in Connecticut? Yeah, I was, I did, I was there a year, so I did like six months on the road, six months in Stanford. Okay. So I was on the home team and on the road. What would you prefer better? Uh, the home team. Okay. Uh, but I mean, like being at TV, like you're in it and it's like, it's much more exciting. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know. A lot of last minute decisions. A lot of last minute things. And um, you typically, if you're just in the writer's room at Stanford, you're not being screamed at by Vince four inches from your face. Oh. But even when you're in that, you're st like still thinking in my head, like, this is kind of cool. Vince is screaming at me, telling me I, ru like, I ruined the business, guys. <laughs> Tonight it was me. You've been screamed at. Oh, God, yeah. That's amazing. By Vince? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh who wrote this? <laughs> what are you, a fourth grader? You can't. Mm. I've had Vince McMahon look at me like he wanted to bite me. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's uh, what access should be every year at WrestleMania. Oh, a booth where, just, where Vince <laughs> like you bites there, you? Or just you like, write down one idea for wrestling, and Vince uh, comes and reads it. Oh, God, it's the last thing we do. Well, like, oh, wow, that was 175 bucks, but it was totally worth it. Yeah. I mean, we all have bosses at different points in our life, so that was... Uh, yeah, the, you get to... I, I like that. The, the pitching booth. Yeah. Ten cents. Mm -hmm. Ten cents. <laughs> well, you know, got to keep it reasonable. Mm. Oh, Fifteen. <laughs> Moving on, so the four horse women and the four horse women kind of squared off. Only there were three on each group. Uh, this happened during the May Young Classic this past week. I don't know what's going to happen with this, but they basically said any time, any place, let's go. Now, from what I understand, Jessa May has already been training in wrestling. Yeah, 
I actually did a seminar with her. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Why did you touch your face after you said it? Are you lying? Cocaine. <laughs> oh, that's okay, it. Okay, Anna. Mm. <laughs> and but Rhonda has not really been in the ring. So is this? Uh, she's been in an octagon, she? bro. That's true. Uh, Rhonda was in the ring with The Rock at WrestleMania 31. And she twisted Stephanie's mm -hmm. arm. I know. Yeah. And Stephanie didn't go complaining about it to everybody, did she? She did not. She definitely did not. Yeah. Sarah, I'm going to you here. <laughs> I'm so done. Is this ever coming to fruition? I'm nervous about it coming to fruition because, I mean, the truth is MMA and wrestling are, are different. And I think we've seen that in Shayna's matches in the Mae Young Classic. So I don't necessarily know that this makes either group of women look good if it does happen. So I don't know. I'm a pessimist. Yeah. I mean, is, is Roddy's wife, uh, I don't actually know her name. She's training because she's at NXT all the time with him. Who? Woman right there. That one? She's married to Roderick Yeah, that's the one I don't know. Yes. Okay. So maybe <laughs> she's at NXT. I don't even know NXT. her name. Is that um, a turkey on her shirt, though? Because that's really cute. It might be. I don't know. It's deflection, and then she breaks your arm. Either way, interesting segment. We'll see what happens. And lastly, this actually just Lashley. happened. Not Lashley. We'll talk about him later. All right. Scotty, Jeff Jarrett uh, has stepped down as basically the chief creative officer of Global Force Wrestling. Yeah, this broke uh, just before we started recording today. Yes. Um, there's not a whole lot about the story that has been come out, uh, that has come out, but uh, GFW's put it out there, and this is... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is. When is GFW going to catch a break, guys? <laughs> I know. Bums me out. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's been really good to us. He's been a guest on the show several times. Yeah. And has invited us with open arms down to Impact, and uh, it's been awesome. And I, it, it's sad news. I hope everybody's okay. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody's healthy and good. But... And the episodes have been really good lately, so. Yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know if Cornette's up to something. He might. He's always up to something. Yeah, he shows up, and then this happens. What is it? All hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose. In a southern accent. Slapcast News! All right, steel cage match. Braun, big show. Show went through the cage. This was as good as expected to me. I love these two guys. I mean, big show did a flying elbow off the top rope. Braun Strowman just, he's just, just a, he's a... Look at Big Show's face. He knows he's not supposed to be in that position at all. Yeah. You mean without eyebrows? <laughs> You're 100% right. Yeah. No one is supposed to be in that position. <laughs> uh, shout out to Andrew Lockhart, who texted me right, uh, like, a couple hours before Raw, and he, he wrote to me, uh, random cage match announced for Raw tonight between Braun and Big Show. I guess it's so this generation can see Big Show go through the cage wall. Wow. So he saw it happening. Yeah, he called it way beforehand. So brilliant. That was pretty good. Yeah, Strowman won the match, but I mean, I guess Big Show. I believe he's having surgery or something. He's gonna be out. The, you know what? Now that you mention it, this would be the perfect swan song for Big Show because that was his debut, throwing Steve Austin through the cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Yeah. What a weird name for a pay per view. Do you remember the rumor before the, the internet rumor before he debuted that was that his name was wasn't going to be Giant. It was going to be Titan. No, I didn't. I remember people talking about that. Like, yeah, no, he's going to be called Titan. Ooh. And they, anybody that would tell you that would always throw it because of Titan Towers. <laughs> <laughs> it's Titan Sports. It's the parent <gasps> company. I think uh, I would have liked Titan. Titan? I, I compared just, to Big Show? I mean, Big Show's been... What, Big Show didn't name. bother me until the music started. <laughs> Well, music the is the Titan. No. I've got a giant tattoo of a tiger. <laughs> I got a favorite football team. I've got a vape in the size of a canoe. <laughs> I'm driving a truck with a flatbed. It's a Nissan. And way to go, referee John Cone, for not falling out of the ring this week. <laughs> yeah. He should have followed and just jumped through the, the open cage. He should cage. have been hanging onto the cage and just, <laughs> <laughs> Not without me. Uh, he cuts a decent promo. Yeah. A good moment for John him. Cone? John Cone? John <laughs> Cone. There's a funny clip of they're playing, I don't know what the context is. It's something for the network or something where they're playing with like Rock'em Sock'em robots or something. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, Heath Slater and I think Sasha's there and somebody else. And all of a sudden John Cone shows up and he's like, where the hell have you been? You told me to be on the on the Omni. He's like, no, no, the autocorrect changed it. I meant in the Omni. He's like, I was on the roof of the building, man. <laughs> what? It's just the most random, hilarious thing I've ever seen. He <laughs> swears in it. And what video is this? It's on YouTube. Put in put in like John Cone, 
like rage. And what? Who put it up? It's a. It's it's from the network or okay. something. Wow. It's cool. from one of their weird. You know, we're hanging out playing games shows. I can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, there's so a much lot. content. First ever John Cohn segment on the show. Really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Johnny Cohn. <laughs> Uh, women's titles now a fatal four-way at no mercy. Uh, we got Emma, we got Alexa Bliss, uh, we got Nia Jax, and of course we have Sasha Banks. Sarah, more intriguing to you now it's a fatal four-way, or were you more into just Alexa taking on Sasha? Uh, I am interested in this because of Emma. I think you know everyone can see that Emma has a lot of skill, and she's not really getting interesting story behind it. So it's like, all right, cool, let's, let's throw her in the mix. Nia, I'm always kind of mm, about, so... Um, we, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm kind of interested in it because we've already seen them, and I feel like we're going to see Alexa and Sasha 30 more times. So, sure, let's mix it up a little bit. Yeah. I still have a hard time believing Nia Jax when she speaks. Yep. Oh, my God. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. We're going to the mall, and I'm going to suplex you. You said it perfectly. I think it's great that Emma's in there. Uh, I, think it's, I think it needs to be... There needs to be more competitors, and I, th- I think it's awesome that she, for as little amount of time as she's had on the mic and on TV to be involved, that she is now, uh, she's now worked her way in there. Mm-hmm. When normally, like the segments that she's gotten with Mickey and all that. Who's that? Oh. Enter right now. How can all notifications be turned off and you make a noise? Try That's pulling fine. that. We're just going to keep going. Look, Vince. we're friends here. It's not a big deal. What would Vince do? Well, Phone's ringing right now. Give me the, give me the phone. <laughs> oh, like a teacher? Mm. No, she's busy getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I'll see you guys. Get my little hat and my little bag. Oh, she'll have plenty of time to return your call on the unemployment line. <laughs> Katie, did you hear what I said? I fired her. I told her friend first. Get out of my room. Get out of my arena! Oh, T Rex head. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead. Read, read, read the next segment. Mm. You were saying, Scotty? It's totally overwritten. Emma, she needs to be in there, and she's the snake in the grass in this. Like she, she's she side of the revolution. That's right. And she's the one who could uh, could be leading it forward. She might be the one that takes it. You know? She's freezing though all the time. Have you noticed <laughs> those lips? Her lips are so blue. It's Raynaud's phenomenon. That's what it's called. She's Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those eyes, those cold blue eyes. It would be something if she pulled off the win, though, because I mean that that's one way to get her from, like you said, what to oh, okay, now she's going to be featured every single week. Do you remember when she like knocked out Becky Lynch, and like it was supposed to be a two count, but like Becky was just knocked goofy, so it was actually a three. I did not know that. So this was on Raw or SmackDown or one of them, like months and months ago. Maybe even a couple of years ago, but like <laughs> you can see Drake, the referee, <laughs> he holds up her hand. He goes, "Be happy that you won," and then she starts celebrating because they're all confused. They're like, "Oh crap!" Wow. Because the referees are told count like it's a shoot, right. count to three. Hmm. If, if the if if you hit the three and it's not supposed to be the three, that's not on you. It's that's, on them. It's over. Yeah. They didn't kick out. It's not your fault. And the announcer just got to call it like a reminder. Be happy that you won. All it's right. Like, be happy that you I won. I that more with the women's wrestlers than anybody else. Would they have moments where they're like busy going, oh, my God, girl, did I just kill you? And forgetting right. that they're supposed to, oh, uh, I mean, yeah. You take those double knees to the chin. Oh, those things. What? Yeah, it's always a bummer when we see the dive to the outside and they do something to them and then they lean over like, hey, how are you? How are you doing? You okay? Yeah. Like, the double knees terrify me every time I see them. Yeah, they're terrifying. Yeah. Jesus. I got yelled at for apologizing in training the other day. Did you? Mm-hmm. I had my friend in an Indian death lock, and I was like, you good? I'm sorry. I kicked you in the face. And they were like, we heard you. And I got yelled at. That's, wow. one, of, that's one of Vince's no-nos. He doesn't apologize. I, I'm shocked. Mm. That Defend yourself. It should not be right. code. You should be yelling and screaming like, I am not sorry for what I did, which is like, a, you know, I'm clearly sorry. Great idea, because we love each other a lot, and I really do want to apologize. Sorry I kicked you in the face, girl. Well, Randy Orton's not apologizing for RKOing Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> That's a segue for you right there. Uh, so SmackDown last week, not the most eventful episode of SmackDown, but <laughs> at the same time... Creep. It looks like he just pooped him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, really, it's very Randy. It's a very Randy Orton photo right there. Can I there. say bad words on this show? Um, it's encouraged. It's not really... Well, you know what I want to say. <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So is he back in the title picture now? Randy? He never left. Yeah, Randy is the title picture. Yeah, I guess. Oh, we got to protect Randy. 
What are we doing with Randy? Where's Randy on the show? I don't see Randy anywhere in the show. You're giving away too much. You're really giving away too much. Ah, this is what we do every week. It's always my favorite thing that you do on your podcast. Where it's always like, what are we doing with Randy? Mm. Where's Randy? How often does Vince say that? It's just, it would, it, it would just be one of those random things. <laughs> I, I feel like that was like a specific thing. Like, we're like, okay, he's going to ask about this. He's going to ask about this. He's going to ask about this. And we go in with all this stuff prepared. And then he's like, where's, where's Randy? I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> Like, there was one, a really funny time was, um, you know, Vince will go through phases where, he, like, he starts fixating on different things. Mm-hmm. And um, there, was, there was a phase where he was really, it was uh, Twitter. Like, everybody needs to be tweeting. And so then uh, they were going over what was happening in the, in the Divas uh, division that night. And I'll never forget, Vince just goes, well, what's Kelly Kelly tweeting about this? And then the guy from dot com sitting there is just like, uh, uh, like, you never know. You have no idea what Vince is going to say next. It's really entertaining. Wow, it's fascinating. It's That's terrifying. It's, it's everything all at once. It's everything all at once. I would imagine yeah. so. Uh, so yes, obviously, Orton not leaving this huddle picture. Benjamin and Gable made their debut, and Bobby Roode uh, took on Mike Kanellis. So, Why overall, is that confusing. Uh, well, Mike Kanellis is clearly, you know, a heel, if you will. Okay. Is Bobby Roode, is, is he not going to be the same person as he was on NXT? The guy that everyone's singing his song and yelling glorious with him? The one that everybody loves? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's a face, Johnny. Mm, see, no, not at NXT. He certainly was not. He's not there? Right. Where's he at? He's on SmackDown Live. Face. Okay. Face. Well, that's my question. Yeah, he's a good guy right now. Until something else happens, until that song goes away, he's gonna get cheered like that crazy. Not going anywhere. No, because that's what defines him at this point. Mm-hmm. That's it. Did you like the Benjamin Gable debut? No. Okay. Go on! I'm just, I'm just salty. I'm sorry. I don't mean it. Why? What's wrong? I just, they were so good together, and I don't understand why they've been split apart. And but you can't just replace a man with another man and expect me not to notice. That's pretty much what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Only one of them's not Kurt Angle's son now. We Every don't know time that. they say his father, Kurt Angle. <laughs> That's true. We only ever met Shelton's mom, right? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Even though they're only and a couple she liked years apart. Whoa. She did like what that. What if Chad is also the son of Kurt Angle? Just from a very small woman. Well, Daniel Bryan was kind of teasing that it sounded like he might have been his son. Mm-hmm. I live for this. That's what that's that's the best part in all of wrestling when everyone's related yes. to each other. Mm-hmm. Got Undertaker Kane. It was the biggest bummer to me when Edge and Christian were no longer related. Oh. They Story. were brothers. Yeah, that was the deal. And then at one point, Gangrel kidnapped Edge's brother Christian, and Edge was trying to save him, and then he wound up joining the Brood instead. Yeah, and then years later, they're, they're just best Canadians. Friends. Yep. They're they were, just Canadians. They were like just they, friends. They removed their relationship, but yeah. we still believe it's the Brothers of Destruction. It's like Happy Days. They used to have an older brother, <laughs> Chuck. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, he just was written out of history. The same thing in Family Matters. Did the, they have another the, kid? The one daughter disappeared after season one. Wow. Never to be heard from again. The Cosby Show, they added uh, an older sister. They did? Yeah, Sandra was not in like the first season. Oh, well, she was busy. Well, was she in the first season? She definitely wasn't in the pilot. And Bill Cosby, uh, excuse me, Dr. Huxpital. <laughs> Hug- Huggable? That one. Hug- Dr. Yeah. Huggable. Dr. Sure. Huggable. Dr. Druggable. <laughs> Far from it. Far from it. He even mentions, you know, why did we have... She says to him, like, why did we have four kids? So it's like Theo, Rudy, Vanessa, and uh, Theo. Lisa Bonet. Got it. I said Theo. I know. So she says, why did we have four children? Denise. And Denise. Another, a different world. Mm-hmm. And, and he says... Because we didn't want to have five. And then by episode two, they have five kids, one's at college. Wow. Explain that to me. Wow. Conspiracy. <laughs> Sitcom conspiracies, everybody. But yes, I do love when everyone's related. Like, they need to come back to Sasha yeah. at some point and be like, you're Eddie Guerrero's grandniece or something. I don't know. Find a way. Make it work, wrestling. You're welcome. I like Eddie Guerrero. What's his daughter's name? I don't recall anymore. She was good. She is good. I don't recall her name right there. I, I mean, she's still good. I meant on those first couple episodes of NXT. Sure. Uh, May Young Classic, guys. This, God, there's so much. A lot of episodes. Four more happened this past week, and now we're down to the final four. We got, uh, I'm sorry, we're down to the final two. Yep. 
We're down to Shayna Baszler taking on Kyrie. The finals. Sands. The finals are happening uh, next week. Yeah, live at SmackDown like Live. 10, I think, or late at night. I, I well, Vegas just... SmackDown. Uh, I'm not sure at what point it's going to air, but it's at the next week SmackDown taping. I'm going with uh, Warzeka. Are you going to Vegas? Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Can I come? Uh, probably. Cool. See you there. Okay. Uh, I don't like the format that they've done this in. I don't know if this is how they did it with the cruiserweights because I didn't watch that live. But like, it here's wasn't a d- bunched up. Here's like a dump. This. Here's a dump of a bunch of episodes. It's like yeah. I don't have time. No, no, they didn't do it like that. Yeah. It's strange. I don't. I don't understand what the logic is. It's really weird. Like, hey, we're going to do this thing. No news about the thing for a while, except then suddenly we're going to talk about brackets, and then no news about the thing for a while, and then here's four episodes. And then wait a week, and here's four more. I don't know. It's just a strange format to me. I agree with you, it's mainly because I want to sit down and like really enjoy each episode. And we have this show to do. I can't enjoy every episode. I literally have to like get through them as fast as possible and make sure I think I've seen the best parts. Where it's like, and I'll go back and watch. But at the same time, I love how Cruiserweight Classic. You could really take it all in. They, 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 you know, they spaced it out very well. Like NXT, it's one hour a week. You could really get into it and take your time. This, four episodes every Monday? And 50 minutes a pop? That's a lot, man. Especially for a tournament that's getting such great reviews, you know, and, and so, many, so many great performances. These women are killing it. And I think it's also kind of weird to do a tournament so quickly just because the whole, like, excitement of a tournament. Like, oh, who's going to face each other? Who's going to win? What's going to happen? Well, I know now. It's very quickly just... Mm-hmm. Getting through these 32 women. Mm-hmm. For you, who's been the stand... Well, a couple of standouts in your brain. Definitely. Um, well, there, there were people that I already knew were awesome. Uh, so I, I guess matches are kind of more interesting to me. Every match that Abby's been in, Bianca Belair has been really surprising to Yo, me. No, she is a natural. I mean, she's been wrestling like a year. Yeah, it's really impressive how good she looks for how long she's been wrestling. Um, Mia, she had a really good match. Uh... You know, I've been actually surprised. Rhea Ripley. Oh, 20 years old? Yeah, Tony Storm and, uh, and the Scottish lady whose name I can't remember. Pippin? Piper? Oh, Piper Nevin. There we go. I, I was like, Piper. Niven? She's an, incredible, she's an incredible athlete, man. Yeah. And she really gets it. Her match with Tony Storm had so many great moments, but the moment where they both bridged at the same time and then shook hands upside down, I'm like, come on, how do you not love this? I love oh, Piper. Yeah. If you don't love that moment, just... She's like Adele if she could beat you up. Yeah. It's very accurate. <laughs> I also like that we got some dives out of this. Like it, it seemed like they stepped it up for round two. Oh, it Carson. was a little more Oof. what we, you know, what we're kind of used to seeing these women do yeah. on the indies. Your point is that that's what you. Do I just love that when she does that. When she's like, she looks at the audience crazy. She's like, oh, wait, should I fly? Should I? Oh, yeah. What do you guys think? So good. I prefer that to the. I hate any time a wrestler is like. Like, asks the audience to, yeah. It's because you take, there's no strategy to that. You're taking way too much time to do your finishing move when you should be doing it as fast as possible. That's the one problem I have with her elbow drop is like, let's come up with other ways to win as we progress here. I just think she needs to come up with more devastating ways to set you up for the elbow drop, at least in this tournament. Fair enough. I think it was both times. I'm trying to remember. Everything's blending together. That's the other problem when you watch all these episodes. That's the problem with binge-watching stuff. Right. You don't remember it. I think almost every time someone went to a top rope, it... Very few times it felt earned to me that the person below was actually going to stay there based on the move that they had just did. So I was always just like on the edge of my seat, like, what's what is going to happen? Why are you going to the top rope? So, but then again, that's a fun way to feel. Well, Shayna Baszler is uh, destroying everybody. I mean, she would not let go of Candice LeRae's neck, and then she also made Mercedes uh, Martinez tap out as that well. That was an excellent match. Yeah, it sure I was. think Mercedes brought the best out of Shayna that I'd seen in the tournament. I think you're right. Well, the, the funny thing is Shayna's matches were only going about five minutes a pop up until that, and that match actually went much longer. And I think you're right. Mercedes is amazing. I mean, she's she might be the most experienced person in the tournament. Uh, Princess Suhei yeah. was more she's experienced. Like 20 years plus. Okay. But then it's her, I think. And then it's... Candice is like Candace, 15 years. Yeah. Sure. Candace so Mer- really Mercedes, young, yeah. Candace, and Princess Suhei are like the most mm-hmm. experienced. See, that uh, Candice blew it because uh, Shayna Baszler's... She would be in the front row of PWG every time. She's sitting there scouting Candace. She was. Yep. For years. For years. The world's She's... cutest tag team. She had something against them. Mm-hmm. She was sitting there, plotting, Very waiting. Cute, cute. Oh, just wait till the turn. Oh, you won't be cute when I'm done with you, Miss LeRae. 
That's exactly how Shayna Baszler speaks. It's true. You ever hear her promos? Of course. <laughs> I'm Shayna Baszler. <laughs> she kind of sounds like she's like twirling a, a cauldron. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. When the other three get here, you'll be doomed. <laughs> the four horse women are going to knock you off your throne. See? You know yeah. I, I met her before, I, and that's exactly how she spoke. You should get a tiny hat like Tony Storm has. <laughs> I'd be okay with it. Johnny Storm. I love... And then I, oh, I tip the hat to people? Tip the hat, and then yeah. underneath is a mouse with a smaller hat. <laughs> <laughs> and an umbrella and a suitcase. Oh, that'd be amazing. Um, so finals, who do you got? Uh, Kyrie. Okay. Maddie. Um, honestly, uh, this is the... I could see the logic of, I think the obvious choice would be Kyrie. I think Kyrie should win. I could see them booking Shayna to win because Kyrie doesn't need it. Kyrie will be fine without it. Kyrie's already a star. They're trying to establish Shayna as a world beater. Mm-hmm. But so they, I think I think I think Shayna's going to win it. I mean, at NXT though, they already do have a woman who is an MMA fighter. So I think mm-hmm. maybe maybe they're going to try to work that out to get them to maybe battle or something like that. I didn't like when they did that with Shayna's matches with, with Mia and with Zeta. It was like, oh, these women also have MMA experience. It's like, okay, but this woman is like one of the best. One ever. of the best right. in the world. So it's really foolish to be like, oh, well, their experience will help. No, because then we would have already seen them against her in that world, so I don't know why you did that. It looked weird. What do you think, Scotty? I don't know. All these names being tossed around are like pharmaceutical drugs. I cannot keep it straight. Describe okay. the person you think will win. I don't know who's left. There's an adorable She's Asian lady. lady with a pirate yeah. hat, and then yeah. there is a flying mean, elbow. grumpy yeah. oh, flying elbow MMA lady. lady. Yeah. Flying, flying elbow, elbow lady. lady. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. I'm going there. I want to see the. I want to see the finals and just see it. I'm too confused. It's been too much binging, and I'm losing track of names. It's so much to take in so quick. Last week on our show, Vince said that uh, Kyrie takes the, the steering wheel of her boat with her so nobody steals the boat <laughs> when it's parked outside the arena. Uh, when JBL was like, "She's let me help you out, folks. She's a sailor or, oh. or something like that. They keep y- yachting. yachting. They're like, she's interested in yachting. She's right. It's like, and we don't care why she she's dressed com- like a pirate. She was but a competitive then, yachter, I believe. Right. Yes. When he says this, and then Lita goes, she's a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> this angry Thank voice. Thank you, Lita. <laughs> It is one of those things when they're like, oh, God, you got to explain why she's dressed like that. People are going to be like, why is she dressed like that? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? She's even explained it. I saw in an article. She said, they I was on a boat for years. Yeah. I competed, and that's why I have the right to dress like this. It's like, you can dress like no, that anyway. Right. They, here's the two things. They explain it every time she's on screen, and two, she didn't dress like that when she was yachting, so it doesn't hold any water. Yeah. I, what if she did? I would. I know. <laughs> she's just on the yacht team with her pirate hat, and the other people are just like... <laughs> like, yeah. they're like, oh, we're headed for rough waters, and she picks up her little compass. She's like, well, let me figure it. It's like, that doesn't do anything. <laughs> I do every time I go on a boat. I dress like a swashbuckler every time. I want to make sure I'm living you're, the experience. You're Paul Birchall out there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't use a monocle. That's right, virtual. But otherwise, I dress like I dress like a pirate. Before the show, you swing in on a rope in here. Mm-hmm. True. Yep. Then Crash. Cut, cut your figure out of the feet first, sheet. and then I slice my thumb. That's <laughs> yeah, how like, I. Ah, how are you? The ropes are hard. That's how I slice my thumb. Very my ropes, tough ropes. Yeah, you got to get a callus. Jeez, I'll tell you that much. Moving on, we're going to bring back an older segment. Only now it's on green screen and on video. So every month we like to choose who we thought had the best month in the business. And so right now, uh, it's the best of the month of what they do. So let's all just take it away. I'm Scott Narver with the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast, and every month we like to focus and highlight those who are exceptional in the world of professional wrestling in a segment we call the best in the month at what they do. And my pick for the best of the month at what they do is Eli Drake. Eli Drake is the new global champion at GFW, winning the gauntlet for gold on Impact Wrestling, beating 19 other competitors at number two and lasting in the ring for over one hour. This past week, Eli even knocked out his competition, vying for a number one contendership for his title by beating the tag team of Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards. In August, Eli Drake was an unstoppable force in the ring and especially on the mic, outshining everyone else in all other companies. That's why Eli Drake is my pick for best in the month at what they do. And if you disagree with me, well, dummy, yeah, 
And speaking of dummies, I'm going to go next. And Scotty, you can't go wrong with friend of the show and GFW Global Champ Eli Drake. But my choice for best of the month at what they do is Rick O'Shea. Because what's more impressive than winning the PWG Battle of Los Angeles one time? Well, how about winning it two times? Ricochet outlasted everyone back in 2014, and he did it again this past weekend, defeating three worthy opponents and then outlasting Jeff Cobb and Keith Lee in the finals. Add to the fact that almost any time anyone mentions the most exciting people to watch in the squirt circle, it's very rare that this man is not mentioned. So my best of the month at what they do, whether you call him a king or a puma, is Ricochet. Ruby Rays is my best of the month pick. Her moniker, Equal Opportunity Ass Kicker, was really demonstrated this month. She had a shot at the Santino Bros Submission Championship and then later this month takes on Brody King and Tyler Bateman for the Santino Bros Heavyweight Championship. And as far as I know, is the first woman to do either of those things. She also defeated Priscilla Kelly and somebody you might have heard of, Mercedes Martinez, at the AWS show this month. In addition to that, she defended her fist combat title against Ray Rosas and is on her way to what I think is the first intergender match at CWF Hollywood against Kevin Condron. Basically, she just continues to smash down any barriers in her path, and I can't wait to see what happens next. I think we're good. And that was the best, best of, of the month, month at what, what they, they do. do. Dummy. Yeah. So who's your best of the month at what they do? Comment below. That was the best of the month at what they do. Time to move on to Global Force Wrestling. Last week, of course, we had in studio the new GFW Global Champion, Eli Drake. And he had a celebration this past week, Scotty. What'd you think? That was an amazing celebration. Sweet couch. They didn't even use the couch. Uh, no, well, they didn't even get that far because people were interrupting them. A lot of interruptions. They had stogies, and he was telling stories, and Adonis was just standing there. Yeah, yeah, it was a great time. Cougar looking for a cubby? Mm-hmm. Fun stuff. Like, let the man have a mic. Mm-hmm. And it was about time, and it was, it was fun stuff. But, like a champion celebration, people got to come in, put in their two cents that they're owed a shot, mm-hmm. or they're the next contender. Johnny Impact being one of them. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that name? The name Johnny Impact? Mm-hmm. I think it's fine. Like, it all started with Johnny Nitro. Sure. Named by Bischoff. So it seems like it's a running gag of sorts throughout his career. You know, where he's got, you know, as he said to to Eli Drake, I've had more names than you've had championships. So fair point. You know, I I think it's something fun. And if you just brand it that way, like, you know, Morrison's the most famous name, but he can't use that. True. Hennigan's not really... You know, flashy. Mm-hmm. Mundo's stuck at Lucha, That's so it's like somewhere else. Just keep keep going with different names. Yeah, it's always good. I can always just guess if it's maybe him when I'm reading articles, and like, is it the name Johnny followed by something weird related, perhaps, to a show? I know who this guy is. We have our very own Matty Impact sitting in studio with us right now. Hi, <laughs> Johnny. He should just be Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Furcoat. Johnny Furcoat. That actually does have kind of a ring to it. It's an impressive, it looks like Chewbacca got skinned, and that's his jacket. You know what's fun about his actual name, Hennigan, is that was the name of the fake whiskey that they drank on Seinfeld. I did not know that. There were two shots of Hennigan. You're such a wealth of knowledge. I am a moments. I am a moments. <laughs> or you're like me, like your memory stops after a certain year. Like you remember <laughs> that, the old stuff, and that's... I like, remember stuff. There, there's plenty of stuff in my prime that I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Nice. You know. <laughs> there's it. stuff I'll never forget there's stuff uh, earlier today that I'm not quite sure if it even happened someone asked me what I did this weekend and I was like ah, I don't know yeah I had to think I about it I stayed inside it was too hot <laughs> I, too hot and also the sun probably would not treat that McCarthy redhead very well no 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 this is not uh, tattoos nope <laughs> Oh, nope, oh, that is lax. The, the sun did this. <laughs> thanks for clarifying that. This Jeez. is not a sweet sleeve. <laughs> it's not like the Orton skulls. It's not a... Right. This is a skull. This is a skull. This is a skull. You remember that? It's not the Jeff Hardy tattoos. Oh, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mo, I need another string for my weed whacker. Oh, Itchweed. <laughs> Itchweed! Woo! the best. Itchweed's the best. Uh, overall, Scotty, what do you think of the episode? I thought it was a great episode. I think they're still on a roll. Uh, things are going good, and uh, they're still just building everybody up on the roster. It was awesome to see Petey Williams come back yep. and wrestle again against the, the now evil Caleb Connolly. What I like about Impact, it, it does a great job of combining a, a good balance of, of comedy recently along with everything else. 
you know, like anything with Grado and Joseph Park is going to be phenomenal. And of course, that went down to where they're just about to get married, and they say, "Oh, they're making arrangements." For making the arrangements, and she said, "Oh, I'm going to tell my whole family in Victoria." And he said, You've, "Victoria, Wisconsin? No, Canada." Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, I knew she was Canadian. I talked to her when I was at Impact, and I didn't want to let it be known here. That's like, well, that seems like it's trouble. Is she hailing from somewhere else? But no, Grado's back to square one. He's going to get deported. I mean, what if he really loves her, though? That doesn't mean anything. He can move to Canada. With citizenship. Oh, okay. Health insurance. Health insurance helps. Yeah, see? You want to get that health insurance. Yeah. I'm learning so much about relationships. Mm-hmm. Don't learn from either one of these. Oh, oh, dear. But it's a great variety show, as you're saying. Like they, They're rounding out their shows very well. I've been married six years. I, don't know. I was going to say, you're doing great. <laughs> um, <laughs> together, ten. Married six. We have a little boy. Wow. That's intense. I think I've made it four months in a relationship. So you kind of trailed off there. What was that? Oh, sorry, guys. <clears throat> There's a microphone right there, so I can throat, catch up. You know, huh? We were talking about wrestling. Yes. Yes, we were. I think Taryn Terrell, man, she just came back a few weeks ago, and she once again proves why she is... In my opinion, the best, one of the best heels out there. She's so I good. I see why am I mean. In case you missed it. Oh, I missed that. That's a hashtag. Yep. That's a mouthful. Wait, in the impact in front of it, that's the whole hashtag? Um, that's I too many words. I don't know if that's the full hashtag or not. Well, think of like, uh, what, like hell in a cell? That's longer. Hashtag hell in a hell cell. Hell in Oh, just the letters. Though. Like, well, yeah. If they're doing that or SummerSlam, H I T C, SummerSlam. That's but big. it's it's too many just random for me. Um, for me, I can't speak for others. As a social sure. media expert, I must chime in and say yes. <laughs> it should just be Impact. If it is Impact, I see why am I. You just made the list. Oh no. Yep. But a Taryn Terrell's amazing. I mean, what she did to to Allie was it's just so. What I like about her is with. With heels. You bet I got something to Whoops. say. I got the wrong button. <laughs> well, that's a. I didn't even know that was still on the soundboard, but it is. Yep. That's great. What's good? What button was that? Uh, the blood button? It's an old segment we we had that was called In the Dirt, and uh, we haven't used it in a couple of years. Wow. But it's, it's it's back, baby. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's on there. I see why am I? <laughs> Anyways, my point is about Taryn Terrell. What I love about her is, you know, she her character, she believes everything she says. Like, she doesn't realize she's insane. She doesn't realize she's insecure. She doesn't realize she's completely out of her gourd. She is that person, whereas, like, other people, like you said, for Nia Jax, ah, Taryn is legit evil with her character, and she knows she's probably, like, the hottest chick in the room, too. And I just, I think she's so good at what she's doing. I'm glad she's back. She beat up your favorite, though. She beat I, up Allie. I love Allie. Where do you stand on this? Um, it's, it's, well... Your blonde bombshells. If they're both on screen, it's a good thing. Sacrifices must be made. But I like, that's the best part, is Allie is so good at being the lovable underdog, and then you have Taryn Terrell, who's just the evil queen. It's perfect. The, them on screen together, it just makes sense. And we'll see if it continues there, but obviously it's going to lead towards Gail Kim, but I can't say enough good things about Taryn Terrell, because she's, she's really great at it. She's gotten so good, even after being gone for almost two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was out of the picture, too. She was, I believe, retired as well. She but. said she left uh, well over a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Had a baby again, a second baby, and, and she's back and just beating people up. Yeah. Soon that baby will show up and start beating people up. Uh-oh. Oh, cycle of life. As long as it is in a hand. But we're not going to see Maxwell. Not yet. WWE was smart. It's signed, signed that kid. He's already, he should be in NXT right now. He needs a network show. Yeah, he definitely does. Uh, so, yeah, that pretty much covers this week upcoming. We're going to have Eli Drake take on Matt Seidel for the GFW Global Championship. Mm-hmm. That's, That's going to be a hell of a match. Uh, and closing out, what is going on with American Top Team? It's very... Messy. Is this, is this another cauldron? Yes, it's very cauldron Two stir? They're, I don't know who all the dudes are. Uh, I really don't know the they're, guy. They're the top team of America is what they are. Sure, yeah. Explain. I, the other guy, I don't know. What's it's the, it's, you know, they're getting a lot of press for Lashley. They're getting a lot of press for American top team, you know. Are and, they Bellator fighters? What's their deal? Well, no. Uh, teams in MMA, like, can fight anywhere. Okay. It's just a training team, you know. It's a... It's essentially a school. Got it. Like a camp? Know. Yeah, camp. 
Okay. So it's a fight camp. camp. Right. Thank they you. can fight in UFC, they can fight Belter, they can fight wherever. They've got individual fighters have deals. And they're all part of a team. And Lashley, The American top, top team. team. And Lashley is part of that team. That's right. Like Foxcatcher, but less weird. Yeah, a little bit less creepy. Well, who's the dude that's been running his mouth? He's like the leader of Jim the team? Cornette. Yeah, that Jim, Jim Cornette. Not oh, Jim Cornette. In this picture, Jim Cornette. He runs his mouth. I know he does. No, the dude. I forget his name. Me double too. Double cheese, double I... meat, triple onions. <laughs> Get it wrong, I'm going to kill somebody. You think we were joking around? You thought we were ribbing. Uh, we're hungry, damn it. <laughs> Gotta drive 400 miles, you ugly beep. Dummy, yeah. I did actually watch that on YouTube. It's pretty It's incredible. genius. It's wonderful. Jimmy, she thinks we're ribbing. <laughs> you think it's a rib? Don't you close the window on me. And he gets out of the car. I'm getting out of the car. Can you imagine his temper back then? Back oh then? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It hasn't changed. Well, I'm sure he's been subdued he's had, a Yeah, he's had to address some issues, but... But he yells know. at them. But, like, you know, but that was back in his, you know, four liters of Sprite a day. <laughs> it's down to three and a half. I think he had to cut it out. Wow. Cut that Sprite. And I don't even think it was like his heart was going to explode. I think he just had acid reflux. <laughs> He's like, well, I can't reduce the stress of my job. I can't, you know, uh, get more sleep, but I can drink less Sprite. Okay, Doc. And that's been the fix. Triple cheese, double meat, extra bread on the side. <laughs> I love Pritchard's compression of him. But with this, I think it's it's building up to something. Like, I, I like the story of what's Lashley going to do. No, Is I'm it enjoying gonna... it. I just, it's, the whole thing is a little bit strange, but I love it. Right, I mean, but you, week to week you find something strange on that show, and you're and that's you don't true. understand it. So it's got intrigue. A lot of intrigue for sure. Uh, now it's time to uh, kick over to Dale Rutledge. So if you are watching this right now, please subscribe to the audio version of the podcast, and you can listen to the full interview of Dale Rutledge with Bianca Belair. Um, so with that said, if you're listening, enjoy the interview. All right, guys, we are at the May Young Classic Tournament, and I'm here with Bianca Blair. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about your time here. So you've been at NXT for about a year now, right? Yes. So how, how's that year been? It's been great. It's been challenging, but it has been great. Um, I came into the Performance Center of April of last year, so mm-hmm. it's been a year and a couple of months. Okay. Um, walking in at first, I was super excited, super nervous. Um, I was, wasn't sure what to expect. Yeah, I bet. And, um, I figured, you know, once I I get in the group of things, I'll I'll know what's coming. I'll know what to expect. But a year later and some change, I'm still not sure what to expect, (laughs) but that's the beauty of the wrestling business. It always keeps you on your toes. Yes, indeed. Um, you never can be slacking. You have to continue to work hard and stay focused. And that's what I've been doing for this past year. I've just been working hard. I've been staying focused. I've been focused on perfecting my craft and learning as much as I possibly can. And it's been great. It's been um, hard. It's been some ups and downs. I got injured um, oh, back in December. Okay. I sprained my MCL, so Ooh. I didn't come back until around the end of March. Ooh. And so that was really tough, you know, being an athlete – your body is everything. Absolutely. And when something fails on your body, it's just like, what am I supposed? This is my body. This, yeah. I keep. I work hard. I eat great. I keep my body in shape. So when it fails you, and you, you're not able to work out, and you're seeing everybody else work out and getting better, it's right. just. It's, then it affects you mentally it, as well as physically. It's, it's more so uh, mentally challenging than anything. Yeah. So that was a really big lesson for me. It's just. You know, in wrestling, it's not going to be the first time that I'm going to get injured. Right. And you just have to stay mentally prepared, always mentally prepared and just prepare for everything. And it's it's been great this year, but nice. I'm looking forward for the future as well. So so what brought you to WWE then? Because I, I read that you were was a track and field at the collegiate level. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that you're already using all kinds of muscles <laughs> at that point. But what, what was the draw to WWE? Um, I was a... Uh, all-American collegiate hurdler, hurdler at the University of Tennessee. Okay. And after I finished competing, um, I didn't really want to go the professional route. I was felt that felt like that was a door that I just needed to close and go on with my adult life mm-hmm. after college. And um, so I went on and found a job, and I was working, but I miss the competitive lifestyle. Mm. So I found CrossFit. Oh, okay. And through CrossFit, you know, I was able to utilize all of my athletic abilities from my track background and even my gymnastics background. And and I was excelling in CrossFit, and I was doing really good. And through CrossFit, Mark Henry, 
uh -huh. uh, saw me on a post or on a video online from a CrossFit event oh, where I was competing, and I, I used to make my own CrossFit uh, outfits. Oh, okay. So a lot of other girls had on just, you know, regular sports bras and shorts, mm -hmm. and I, I made my own outfits. I had crazy, colorful outfits, and out of the world, just different. Just wrestling attire already, basically. Basically. <laughs> uh, I came out in a tutu one time and uh, looked like Mickey Mouse another time. And, <laughs> nice. Uh, he, he saw a video of me working out in, in those outfits, and there was another video where I was speaking on the microphone, and, and he just asked me, you know, have you ever thought of being a WWE wrestler? And ironically, probably like two weeks before that, I was telling my mom, I, I want to be a wrestler. So I went online. Yeah. And um, I was seeing where you can enter in your information for a tryout, and um, but I never did it. And so when he contacted me, it was just weird. Yeah, what it, uh, it, interesting timing. Yeah, and at first I thought um, this is fake. <laughs> right, this yeah. isn't Mark Henry. Uh -huh. um, You're like, did I win a cruise? Too? And yeah, <laughs> so and um, but once I realized it was real, it just made me feel like that this is way too good to be true. And if not, then this is perfect, and this is for me. And so he told me that he can get me a tryout, but he, he said— He might know some people. Yeah. He, he said, <laughs> I can definitely get you a tryout, but the rest is up to you. I can't give you the spot. Right. So I just took on that opportunity, and I went full force into it. And two tryouts later, I, I was walking into the Performance Center last April. Wow. That's such a cool story. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Not a lot of people have that that particular story either, so that's really awesome. Yeah. Do you? So, are you still doing CrossFit like as part of your training, or um, how, what do you do to? What's the difference between say that and being here as a WWE performer? Um. Well, with CrossFit, I haven't done CrossFit since I came. I okay. I wanted to strictly focus on wrestling, and focus on uh, you you know, wrestling is completely different from any sport I've ever played, and the toll that it has on my body mm. with um, the different exercises and the rolls and the bumping, it um, I, I just wanted to focus on that and focus on how my body was going to respond to it and recovering from that before I added on <laughs> CrossFit. Right, right, right. And and so, but I I just I've completely thrown myself into wrestling and honestly I don't have the time and I just don't have the will mm -hmm. anymore because everything I just put everything into wrestling. Yeah. And so I mean we have a great strength and trip strength and conditioning coach, Sean Hayes here. Oh nice. Okay. He, he utilizes some things from CrossFit and um the sh he he's great. He he keeps my strength up, he keeps my agility up, uh my cardio I, I'm I feel like I'm in better shape now than I've ever been before. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, gotten a chance to meet or talk to Seth Rollins about, about CrossFit life? He's like CrossFit Jesus, you know. I, I haven't had it. <laughs> he is. He, he's really into CrossFit. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to him about CrossFit. He was uh, here in the Performance Center uh, once before, and oh, okay. I, I, I introduced myself. But uh, we haven't had, like, a, a, a conversation or talked about CrossFit. But I'm sure that he will have a lot to say about CrossFit because <laughs> one thing about CrossFit, if you are into it, you're, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Mm -hmm. And if you love it, you can talk about CrossFit for days. Oh, I'm sure. It's, it's a love. That's yeah. wrestling too, though. Yes. It, you know? Same thing with wrestling. Like <laughs> I just I went home and saw my dad for his birthday uh, last week in I just I had to stop myself. I feel like every word that came out of my mouth was wrestling this and wrestling that, and we did this and we did that. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. How are you today? You know. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't mind though. I'm sure he no, likes they, to hear what you're they doing. Love it. Yeah, they love it. yeah. Are they here locally or where are your parents? No, they're they're in Knoxville, Tennessee. Where oh, I'm okay, from. okay, yeah. cool. That's not so. too bad of a trip though. It no, um, the plane tickets are pretty cheap, but we drive, so oh, okay. It's about oh, it's about ten hours. Yeah, that's a drive. But, it's it's not too bad of a drive. That's so. nice. So so then, did you move here for the performance center? Were you in Knoxville before? I, I was actually in an um. I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, I was okay. working for a flavor company there. Nice. And um, I had been living there for about a year and a half, and I uh moved from Atlanta to Orlando. Okay. F uh, to come and work out in the performance and, be a, and to be a part of NXT. That's not too bad of a change. Atlanta's, Atlanta's pretty chill. I mean, it has its... Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, it's it good. Sings. But I, I like Orlando. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I really do like Orlando. Are you a Disney fan at all? I am, but I've I've been once. Since just I've once been, just in a year. Once. Only wow. once. You, don't have a lot of you time. are dedicated. You yeah. are dedicated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, so then what is life in Orlando like? I read that uh, now you, you just recently have been engaged. Is that right? Yes. Nice. So that And that kind of <laughs> came with, with uh, the WWE as well? Yes. yes. Um, what's that been like? It's been great. Um, I met my fiancé. Um, I actually didn't meet him. I mean, we're both employed by NXT, but mm-hmm. I didn't meet him for a couple months into – being employed here, oh, okay. I kind of kept to myself a whole lot, mm. and um, but once I did meet him, it's, it's it's been great ever since, and he pushes me so much, and I push him, and it's just great to have somebody that uh, I can talk to and can understand where I'm coming from, and supports that, you and gets it, and gets it, and I can go home and and talk about wrestling, and, and it's not like oh, can we <laughs> talk about can we change the subject? He's it's like just, moving peas around on his plate. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah. So it, it, you know, it, it's been good. He's. I think he's been a great asset to uh, everything that's going on in my ch- short time here at NXT and uh, all the opportunities that I'm getting. Like he supports me, and it, it's it's been great. And just being able to have a social life outside of wrestling, I bet. and um, you know, we we have our little things that we do on Sundays on our only day off, and we have our little rituals that we do and. It's it's been good. It's 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 easy. It's more easy for me to have a social life with someone who's a wrestler as well because they understand like I'm tired today or yeah. my body hurts today and just like I understand. It's like understand. oh I know. Look so, at this bruise. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, it's been great. Now, how do you plan a wedding and a May Young Classic? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, um, my focus right now is being on the May Young Classic. Uh huh. His focus right now is with his uh, tag team, and we both respect that. Uh, we have a lo- plenty of time. So but, you're doing a ways out. Well, no, we're actually going to do it pretty soon. Oh, okay. Um, but it's 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 going to be something um, intimate. We, we like to keep it. We want to keep it intimate, and we want to keep it. You know, it's it's for us and our family. So it's easier. It's going to be soon, but it's not going to be anything lavish or big. It's just, okay. It's, it's going to be. For, for us. Nice, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Last time I was here, it was for the CWC, and I was interviewing Johnny Gargano, uh-huh. and he was about to get married at Disneyland. Oh. So I'm sure that was quite a production. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah. you got help on that. Yeah. I don't think I could handle that. Um, so what are, what are some things that you thought about wrestling? Because you had to have some predetermination of what like becoming a wrestler would mm-hmm. be. What are some things that you thought in your head that turned out to be just completely not true? Um, I remember probably two weeks before I came here, I started watching a lot of things on YouTube. Okay. Uh-huh. And it was a lot of um, Sasha Banks when she was in NXT and a lot of her wrestling matches. And everything just seemed so fast-paced. Mm. In the ring, it was just so fast-paced and so aggressive. And it just seemed like um, I just thought... Am I able? Am I going to be able to do this? And right. as an athlete, and I, I hardly ever question myself. I like to have a lot of confidence in myself, and I just had, I had a little bit of doubt. And well, knowing it, looking at videos like that, yeah. Like, oh, and what did I sign up for? You know, <laughs> girl, girls like her and Charlotte and Becky, uh, they have so much experience. And I'm just like, I'm an athlete, but I'm coming in. I have no experience, and these girls know all these moves, and it's so fast-paced, and I just wasn't sure. Um, But coming in, you know, with coaches like Sarah Stock and Sarah Motto, they have been so helpful, so patient, very hands-on. And I get in the ring a lot, and I always move really fast. And they always tell me, slow down. Oh, interesting. (laughs) And uh, so that's been a little bit of – a change, you know, just just slow down, take your time, um, and breathe. Think about what you're doing, and um, that's that was probably the biggest thing for me. Is just to have confidence in myself and to slow down because I tend to like go really fast when I'm trying to do something, and if I'm not sure, I just try to do it really fast. And it's like just slow down. You have this. You're, you're you're confident. Just show that in the ring. And so that's probably the one thing where I just I, I I was doubtful a little bit and and I just had to learn how to have confidence 
in the skill that I'm learning and, and have confidence in my coaches and trust them that they're teaching me the right ways to do things and just to slow down and think and just have confidence. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, at what point, so you've been here for a year, at what point did the, you realize or get the notice that you'll be able to participate in the Mae Young Classic? Well, I, f- I feel like there's been talk about a women's tournament. For a while. For a while. Yeah. And when I first heard it, it was like, wow, that, that, that could be great, you know, but it just was a talk, talk, well, what is it going to be? And it wasn't, wasn't really a date. And um, they finally set a date. And then um, they finally got us all together, and they told us, you guys are going to be a part of the May Young Classic. And I heard it, but I didn't hear it, if that makes sense. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. And Who on, delivered the news? Yeah, so um, just thinking about it, you know, I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm a part of this tournament. This is a big deal. This is great. But Monday, when I walked into the Performance Center, and um, I'm getting everything together, and it just actually hit me. Uh-huh. And I, you know, looking around and seeing all the girls and 32 competitors and seeing um, that I'm a part of something that's going to be history. And it's only 32 girls. Like, you think about it, you look around, 32 girls in a tournament seems like a lot, but that is not a not lot. Not thinking worldwide. Nope. And just to think that I was one that they selected to be a part of this tournament and it being associated with the legend like Mae Young Mm -hmm. and someone who has such a great legacy and someone who is a pioneer of women's wrestling and she created so much history and it's just amazing to think that now I'm a part of that and now I can create my own history. Yes, indeed. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. It's really cool. And if people want to follow you, are you more of a, a Twitter gal? Are you like Instagram? Or what's your favorite? I'm Twitter and Instagram, same name, uh, Bianca Belair, WWE. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we pretty much, uh, we're good to go on this episode, I think. Oh, all right. Yeah. So why don't we all, you know, put ourselves over here. We're at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram. We're Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. Matt, you can put your hands down. You're fine. You, all right. Everyone just. Um, so, yeah, that, that's us. Uh, Scotty, why don't you put yourself over? Well, you can check out Dave Main Amaze, the feature film that I am in, along with John Hennigan, Mundo Nitro, Impact, all those names. He's in there as well, along with many, many other talented people. Available on all video-on-demand platforms everywhere. Check out YouTube.com slash OnYourMarkShow. The funniest shoot interviews for free on the Internet, hosted by Marky Extreme. Uh, this past week was Freak Show Wrestling, profile on there. And then you're going to see the in-ring debut of Marky Extreme with Gadoff Hitler. So what? that is a must-see. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. Is Skeeter involved? Ooh. Skeeter is involved. Oh, boy. Yeah. So. Cannot wait. Matt it's McCarthy. Crazy. Hey! Uh, all forms of social media, at McCarthy Redhead, Twitter, I Instagram. can't believe there's Snapchat. only one McCarthy Redhead out there. I'm the one. It's amazing. I took my name and my thing <laughs> and put them together. And it just works. And it makes sense. <laughs> Go to yes. thisismattmccarthy.com. Go to wewatchwrestlingpodcast.com. And... Uh, That's it for me, kids. (laughs) He's out. Peace. Sarah the Rebel. Why, are you going to make me go after that? I'm sorry, you got to follow it. you got to do your (laughs) best. I don't have any glasses or a hat. You have Uh, glasses. All right. Listen up, kiddos. Sarah the Rebel everywhere. Sarah's an H, because that's just how you spell Sarah. It's very important to me. You can find me on Women Wrestling Friends Podcast, where I get a bunch of women to come talk to me about wrestling, because we all like wrestling. Look it up. It's in a documentary, I think, that women like wrestling. There it's hard go. to see this now you way. you got to do a closeout. you got to do something cool like Matt did with you. Uh, buy my book on Amazon. Bam! There it is. Follow Dale Rutledge at The Walking Dale. I am at Jay Quasto. Go to Quasto. You know what? Give me it. You could have done, uh, done La Quasto Memory Loss. That's, uh, that's, that's going to be your social fact. media. La Quasto Mania. <laughs> memory Loss is my thing. Yeah, that is and your thing. And La Quasto is my name. So, y'all, go to QuastoAlbum.com and make sure you pick up my brand new comedy album. Well, it's been out a month, but it got top ten on Billboard, and I think you really enjoy it. So go to QuastoAlbum.com, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, you can get my uh, stand-up single. Turn back. Uh, it's about me right now, Matt. Go to QuastoAlbum.com. I forgot to plug a thing that they would what, actually what you, like. What do you want to plug? I have a single on, on like... What do you mean you have a single? It's it's just the pro wrestling fan routine. What are you, Rockwell? Routine. You're doing a song? It's just, it's just the 7-inch I put on it so you can get it digital. Pro wrestling fan, Matt McCarthy. And what is it? It's an eight-minute routine just defending pro wrestling fans. I think I've seen fans. that joke. I think yes. I've seen it before. Uh, where you love. You just it's available on all digital platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon. And how much is it for the consumer? It's, 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 it's affordable. It's affordable. Okay. So go find that segment as well and Can enjoy I it. you too? Yes, I forgot please. to mention you should come to Sid Tito Bros for Brian Kendrick's Wrestling Pro Wrestling and for the, the Sid Tito Bros Kendrick? show after that. Yes, yes. The, not the other ones. The. Yeah. The Brian Kendrick. Scotty, anything? Hey, you know what? Curtain jerks is still a thing. Perfect. And uh, this Sunday, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, we have our live TV tapings. And then, of course, Saturday, September 23rd, a lot of stuff is going towards our episodes on the CW. If you're in SoCal, come on out and support. Otherwise, QuastoAlbum.com. I'm also at the Brea Improv this oh, weekend. Oh, yep. <laughs> Go ahead. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm at the Brea Improv this weekend with Tiffany Haddish. It's going to be a lot of fun. She's a buddy of mine from like a decade ago, and now she's like super famous and awesome. So, uh, if you're in Orange County, check that out as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. We love you. We'll see you next week. Keep chasing your dreams. Hey, everybody. I'm Johnny LaQuasto. For more Wrestling and Padre Slamcast, make sure you click that button and subscribe to the stream.tv.